Ladies and gentlemen, I done goofed with this particular thing right here. As you can see, it uses 40 RF per tick to pulverize cobblestone into gravel. And it even has an augmentation uh, that makes it a little bit faster and also use more energy, as you can see right there. But with this pack in the quest directly in getting started part two, uh, we get introduced to the Flux Sieve, but also the Flux Hammer. But way back in like episode 2 or episode 1, uh, whenever I set this up, I was like, you know what, let's go into the Thermal series with the Pulverizer, because that is going to be a lot better. Right? Right? No. You see, with the Flux Hammer, if we use the Flux Hammer and give it a gold upgrade, it actually performs, I think, faster than the Pulverizer in the long run, but also uses even less than half the power of the pulverizer. That's huge. <laughs> and we have power generation issues, as, we can, as you can see here. We got nothing in the energy cell here, nothing in the magmatic uh, dynamos here. Everything is being used for all of our machinery. So I think to start off with, I think this is something that we need to change ASAP. Now, of course, to change that, we need flux hammers. And for that, we need a bunch of iron, but I do have Plenty of it right here, and I should have, hold on, I'm removing this uh, pulverizer here, but I do want to take out this hardened integral component, because I want to use that later in the episode, because I do still want to optimize our power generation. First off, I need to make some components for this thing right here. Uh, should I be, I, deep, deep, hoppers, uh, just, that, okay. I'm still getting used to using this kind of inventory. There we go. That, that's better. Also, casually just need 10 iron blocks. Yep. Yep. Easy. Now, we also need diamond hammers in the in these recipes, so that is going to be a little bit pricey, but we do have 28 diamonds right here, so 10 diamonds is nothing. They will come back just as quickly as they're used. Well, not quite, but almost. And there we go. Flux hammer 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I actually just realized now that I do believe that I just need four for the setup? And you know what? Let's make the fifth. We'll need it eventually down the road. Um, but if I then go ahead and take this flux hammer and I orientate it this way, it's going to get cobblestone right here due to the pipe leading into it right here. And then that is the output, which should lead, in, uh, lead into the flux sieve. It says the machine is working. And... Hmm. Oh, they're doing the action at the exact same time. There we go. We saw it right there. It is working. Now, to make this completely optimal, we can go ahead and get a gold upgrade, which is going to increase the usage of this quite a lot. It is going to process two items at a time, and the RF per tick is 16. More than 50% less power used than the pulverizer. Now, we can't actually use the flux hammer when it comes to ore chunks right here. So for this, we will need to keep the pulverizer. But for this setup over here, which is sifting uh, dust, we can go ahead and take these pulverizers and just boom, boom, boom. And this should work just fine. This is going to get cobblestone. This is then going to get the gravel. And then this is going to get the sand, which is going to turn it into dust. And now it's bedtime. So now just to optimize all the machines, I want to make a bunch of gold upgrades. So I need to see if I got enough cyan terracotta for this. Uh, I got enough for five, so that is plenty. We got plenty of gold as well. So I'm gonna need a few emeralds here. Oh, we, wow, we got 32 emeralds. Uh, so I think five emeralds should do the trick to get enough cactus. And I really should be farming this, but I'm, <laughs> I can't be asked. <laughs> It's, it's so easy. We don't use emeralds right now for anything else. So for now, this is fine. Oh, wow. Would you look at that? We don't even have enough RF to smelt the dust that is coming into the furnace. That's oof. All right. I do now believe that I have everything in order to make some gold upgrades. I do believe that I only need three. So one, two, three. Just like so. And of course, we can turn these gold upgrades into diamond upgrades eventually, but that is going to make the, each machine cost 512 RF per tick. We don't have that capacity just yet, so getting them to gold should be just fine. Now they will all 
uh, crush two blocks at a time. Sweet. Setup has been improved significantly. Now for the next big thing that I want to do is go ahead and make three more hardened integral uh, components right here because we can use these on the magmatic dynamos. So currently they're producing 40 RF per tick, but if we go ahead and give it a hardened integral component, this should, yep, make it generate 80 RF per tick. I think it will use a little bit more fuel, but I'm pretty sure this thing, ooh, this thing is actually having some trouble. Oh, wow. Well, we can, we can easily hook up another one very easily. Um, but yeah, if we give each one of these machines one, that is going to double our power production right here. And hopefully that should be enough to start getting an overflow. Yep, all of these machines are starting to store a lot more power. Yep, 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 this is good. They are starting to lack power though, so I think it is time to set up another fired crucible, which I do have right here, perfect. And there we go, that is another superheating coil. And if I just go over here real quick, plop it down, plops this down, and ooh, maybe, hmm, how can I best run this? You know what? We're just gonna go ahead and get some item pipes as well as some fluid pipes. We got plenty of these, that is nice. Ideally, hmm, hmm, indeed. I think actually, just to make it look a little bit prettier, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then go ahead and do this. And of course, set that to output. That is going to double our lava production. And I think that is going to make it so this can now keep up. Hopefully. Oh yeah, we are definitely generating more power now than before. That's awesome. Now that's, in my opinion, enough optimizing for one episode. I want to get into some other exciting things as well, such as potentially going to the nether, but there is one thing that I really, really do want to test. As you can see here, I managed to get some grass blocks growing here, uh, basically just using grass seeds, which you can get from searing dirt. But if I go ahead and remove this dirt in the center, and I just realized I actually don't have an infinite water source anymore because I removed my old one. That's not good, so let's make one over here because I want to test something. You might be able to tell what I want to test. If I take some bone meal and place it around, hopefully I get flowers and not grass. I could probably purchase flowers, but where is the fun in that? Yeah, this is, this is, gonna, this is gonna take a little bit. All right, for the moment of truth, will this work? Oh, it does. Oh, no. Nope, 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 nope. That's my base. <laughs> that actually works. A 3x3 three three portal to the Twilight Forest. Oh, boy. That's cool. I wasn't sure if making a 3x3 three three portal would actually work. But ladies and gentlemen, it did. <laughs> Okay, that's sick. Now that's not the only portal that I want to make today. I also want to go ahead and see if we can make a flint and steel. And do I have any obsidian? I have one. <laughs> I have one. I should be able to work with that though. So if I go ahead and, oh yeah. Yep, this should definitely do the trick here. If I just go ahead and get a little bit of iron. So if I just go ahead and grab some lava, place it in here and then do this quickly. I got a very easy way of getting okay, <laughs> of getting obsidian. It's going to be a little bit time consuming because I want to make a bigger portal than usual. But as long as this thing, well, the fire crucible can keep up, which I think it can. This should be pain, fa fairly painless and as long as I can keep the rhythm up. All right, 16 obsidian. I think that might do the trick. I think I'm gonna build the portal. Actually, I'm not gonna break that one. I'm gonna break this, this, and this. I'm gonna place obsidian here, and then I'm gonna kind of follow it up here. Don't know how tall we should, oh dear. Yeah, 16 is not gonna cut it. I want it a little bit taller than that, but, oh, actually, yeah, 16 will cut it just fine. It's gonna cut it perfectly, I think. Because now I can go ahead and just... Would you look at that? 
that was that that was perfect right there. Calculated. <laughs> and so what I can do is go ahead and right click this. And we got another portal. So that is two portals, one leading to another and one leading to the Twilight Forest. Now, there are a few things that I want to do to get prepared before I actually go to these places because obviously if both of them, they're kind of dangerous, a little bit deadly, one more than the other. So there are a few things that I do want to do before heading out. However, we did get this when we got some leather quartz. Well, that's actually useful. That's actually very useful. That's definitely got to get stored. But yeah, I want to make some armor, but I also want to make a Paxel. And this one is going to be a little bit expensive, but it's going to be the diamond Paxel. And I think because... Oh, wait, no, we don't actually have enough diamonds for this. Um, hmm. I was going to make full diamond armor. But seeing as that's not exactly possible, because we only have 18 diamonds... Unless I just AFK for a bit and uh, wait this out. I think I've got to do that. So while some more diamonds are being generated here, there are two things that I really quickly just wanted to get covered. And that is because I just found out something recently about all the mods mod packs that I didn't know uh, previously. And that is these mod packs actually do have a goal. And that is to make the, all, the ATM star, the all the mod star, which can be used to make a bunch of like creative... Uh, things such as the creative source jar, the, the everlasting uh, mana pool, and all sorts of cool stuff. And that is kind of the goal um, of this pack. I'm pretty sure if we go into all the modium or creative, nope, that's not it. Creative, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of the goal here to get to all these creative items. And so that is what is, we are going to be moving steadily towards. Um, and that is something that I really want as well. All the mod um, this stuff right here, that's actually an ore that we can get from the Twilight Forest, which is why one of the reasons why I want to go there, because we could actually get uh, this very ore, and as it says, player mineable only, not quarryable. So we'll be moving slowly towards that, hopefully, but not only that, I wanted to take a look at how we can actually get uh, netherite scrap right here, because that's something I want to get for multiple reasons, and the way we can actually get it is not too complicated. We get it by uh, sieving crushed netherrack, and the way we get that is by crushing, well, netherrack. And to get netherrack, we can actually use the mechanical grind basin from Integrated Dynamics. Uh, and in one of these me mechanical grind basins, we can put magma block, and we get magma block, from mechanical drying basin. So that is something that I would love to get set up so we can actually get uh, generating netherite scrap. Because that, yeah, that's gonna be really cool to get. I mean, it has quite a few uses, but one of them as well is the loot fabricator. It, it basically unlocks a bunch of cool stuff that I want to get into. So yeah, getting that would be amazing. But with that said, we now have 24 diamonds, which means we can go ahead and make some diamond armor. Hopefully we will be upgrading from this uh, eventually, but for now this is going to give us a little bit of protection. I guess I also need some kind of sword. Um, I guess iron is really all I can afford unless I wait for more diamonds, which I might do. So I'm still waiting for more ja diamonds to uh, get sieved here and actually none has come through. So in the meantime, I actually went ahead and got all the stuff that we need in order to set up a system for... Oh, it's two per. One second. I went ahead and set up everything to get ancient debris collectible, basically. Uh, do I have a chest? Ooh, that's not... Hmm, I should, I should be able to upgrade it. Golden chest to, should do for now. Now where to place this monstrosity? Hmm. All right, I have done something here. So we got another lava generation set up right here with another heating coil under it. I placed that down a couple episodes ago. So I'm taking the lava from that system leading into this mechanical drying basin, which is going to produce uh, magma blocks, which is then going to be led into this one, which is going to then produce netherrack which is then going to be exported into this hammer, which is going to crush the netherrack into crush netherrack, leading into the sieve, which is going to empty it into this gold chest. I think that should work. Also went ahead and made two gold upgrades. Oh, I can, I can give it more? 
Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know you could stack these. Okay, that's uh, that might be something I do in between episodes because that's a lot of upgrades to craft. Okay, that's a good thing to know. You can actually uh, stack these up to three, it seems. Okay, awesome. Well, my problem right now is I need to somehow get power underneath this and get it up to these machines here. Um, <laughs> only issue is... Yeah, that's, um, that's void. That's a bit scary and dangerous. Um, not to mention I could actually fall down there. Uh, this is most definitely not the most optimal way of running this, but uh, I'm going to be working on a better design in between episodes here. But for now, this should give these power. Yep. So now... I think, if I have done everything correctly, if we set this to output, this is going to get lava. This is then going to get magma, which uh, isn't going anywhere. Hmm. Okay, so apparently this thing outputs from the bottom. Um, okay, that means I can actually do something else here and make this even more compact. Okay, I couldn't do it the way I wanted it to, but I think this is going to work. So, <laughs> okay, I'm going to collect this. Lava is going to be put into this. It's generating the magma blocks. That is then put into here. And that's not working. Why not? Aha. I had to drain the final lava that was in here, so now it's generating the netherrack that it is supposed to. It is putting it into the flux hammer. We shouldn't put those in there. That actually needs to be in there. There we go. It is crushing the netherrack and feeding it to the flux sieve. Now we have crushed netherrack. All I need now is to basically get some meshes going, and then we're good to go. And there we go. A diamond mesh. Actually, hold on. I forgot. We can upgrade it to emerald. Right off the bat, not sure exactly what it does, but we can, so there we go. Boom, Emerald Mesh is now in, and we should very, very soon begin to see stuff come into this chest. Yep, there we go, we gotta get gold, we gotta get cobalt, and hopefully a bunch of netherite scrap as well. Oh, wow, well, we can get a beacon for just 25 emeralds. What can we actually use a beacon for? Does it actually have any usages? Or is it just... Hmm. Well, it, it, I, I mean, it's a beacon. Is it worth the 25 emeralds, though? Ah. It, it's sure. It's sure. <laughs> we got ourselves a beacon. Not sure if we'll ever use it, but there we go. Now we have it, just in case. I'm also going to go ahead and make this basic energy cell. We have the starter energy cell, but I want the basic here. Because that is going to be able to store four times as much power. Now, did I just lose the power that was in here? No. Perfect. So I can actually just... Well, kind of just... Hook both of these up to the network, kind of? But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep this as a spare, just in case we need some portable power somewhere. And then we'll be able to fill this up. This can, like I said, hold four times as much energy. And yeah, I, I think that is way more worth it. That probably not grammatically correct but it is today <laughs> guys things are looking very much up in the world of uh, all the mod 7 to the sky in our eye or on our island here i should say and we are coming to a close on this episode but before we do end i do want to head through to the nether just to see how it looks because we made those two portals and I, yeah, we, we need to go through at least one of them. In the next episode, we will be exploring the Twilight Forest, I promise that. Um, and probably more of the Nether as well. But I, I do I do need to just pop through the Nether here. Even though I don't have proper tools, I know I won't be able to go very far. Because... Yeah. Yeah. This is, um... Very unfortunate. <laughs> Also a very unfortunate biome to spawn in due to it being a soul sand valley. We won't be able to see very far at all. So Yeah, oh wait hold on the map has revealed a fortress 
Very cool. We will probably explore that in the next episode. Yeah. I'm gonna head back now before I fall and die and lose everything. <laughs> that would be kind of bad. I guess if we can pop through one portal, we can pop through the other as well. Yeah, yeah. I... Sure. <laughs> I may regret this. Here we are. In the Twilight Forest. There's a house. Um, there's a pig or a boar. Plenty of trees. Yeah. Looking good. Looking very good. Ooh, some structure and stuff. Yeah, we're gonna explore this in the next episode. For now though, hold on, I'm actually gonna go ahead. Can I make a bookmark right here? Home portal. There we go. <laughs> I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna lose this place. Alright, one final thing before we end today's episode, and that is that this is actually, or this system right here is actually not keeping up with the mechanical drying basin here. Um, it, it, yeah, it needs apparently 1000 uh, MB in order to start the production of another magma block, and it can't get to another 1000 before it is actually, has actually made the next magma block, so... I'll need to work on that uh, off camera. I'll probably add one or two more five crucible just so this can run uh, smoothly and uninterrupted. We haven't got any net right scrap yet, but hopefully at the beginning of the next episode, because I'm going to do a bunch of work off camera here, we will have a ton waiting for us. So guys, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. If you did, be sure to leave it a like, subscribe if you're new, enable those notifications so you don't miss out on the next episode. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful day and goodbye.